If we want Jimmy to be our coach, I think we just have to put up with this. I'll explain next on this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. But there's going to be one team that's going to play solely as a team. No man is more important than the team. No coach is more important than the team. The team, the team, the team. Looks deep for Anthony Clark. Waits for it. Yes, Clark. Hey, hey, they said you can't be a hard state. Now what? Brady gets terrific. Turns it, and a touchdown night again. Just before Brazil got him, and a leaping interception by Woodson. Harbaugh back to throw over the middle, caught by Collins at the five on his feet, touchdown Michigan! On his way, it's good! He's 5'7", 179 pounds, a junior at Michigan, but Jamie Morris packs a wallop, and he delivers for Bo Schindler. And here's your first play, pressure coming, second. It is Glenn Steele, number 81, who fought his way through the traffic. Option. And Robinson calls his own number, and he's going to score. Oh, an easy touchdown for Robinson and Michigan. win the championship again because we're going to play as a team and when we play as a team and the old season is over you and I know it's going to be Michigan again Michigan Go Blue, I'm Steve Dace, and welcome to this week's episode of Michigan Podcast. And I'm reminded of a moment early in my broadcasting career where I was engaged in a level of, uh, shall we call it, um, activism on my opinions, and it made my uh, general manager uncomfortable. And he called in our program director for a meeting to discipline me. And I didn't get disciplined for it uh, because when he asked our program director, hey, what are we doing here with Dace? Why are we putting up with this? And my program director looked at him and said, well, in my opinion, he's the best person we can hire to do this job. That's why we're putting up with it. And the general manager was like, all right, then I put up with it. Then we shall. All right. And that was kind of the end of the meeting. Uh, I bring that up because I know there is a contingent of you right now who are watching Jimmy again and even more aggressively and more openly this time uh, pursue a job in the National Football League. And you're like, what are we doing here? Why are we tolerating this? We're not. It's it's January. We're not doing like any recruiting right now. We missed out on a couple guys in the transfer portal. What is happening here? I mean, if he wants to go, just tell him to go. What are we doing? Well. I I don't think there's a better football coach that we could possibly hire. So that's what we're doing here. <laughs> it's just, you know, I mean, un- unfortunately or fortunately, I mean, it, you kind of want your people to be wanted by other people. Otherwise, maybe they're not good people. But unfortunately, on the other end of this, it just so happens that our coach has two loves, two great loves, Michigan and the NFL. And in the case of, in in our case, he has fulfilled his mandate. He has fulfilled his mission. It is mission accomplished. As Blake Corum said, business is finished. He's taken us to the mountaintop. He's vanquished Ohio State three years in a row. He's put together the greatest three-year stretch in Michigan football history. He just coached probably the greatest team in Michigan football history. And he just won the school's first undisputed national championship since 1948. There's nothing left to do here for him. There's no more commitments to honor. doesn't mean he doesn't love Michigan. doesn't mean if he can't land an NFL job, he won't come back here and still be the jackhammer. But 
there is one other available space in the coaching resume that has yet to be filled. One box left unchecked. That's a Super Bowl that he lost to his brother by like a foot. And knowing the way the Harbaugh family operates, that probably gets brought up every now and then at family gatherings. So it's a small list of coaches that have ever won a national championship and a Super Bowl. Barry Switzer, Jimmy Johnson, Pete Carroll. That's it. What an accomplishment it would be for Jimmy to add his name to the fourth, which is why I think if he gets an NFL job that gives him what he wants, he is gone. And if he doesn't, he'll come back. But I think the odds at the time that we are taping this that he's going to get that offer are greater now than they have been the previous two seasons. And if he goes, by golly, build him a statue and tell him thank you. He could very well be the greatest living Wolverine ever when you consider his accomplishments, both as a player and as a head coach. But we'll cross that bridge if we come to it. We're set up with a coach in waiting who helped him rebuild this program from the ground up culturally. And we've already seen win several big games, but we'll talk about that too, if and when the time comes here in the very new future. For now, I think we just have to understand. We have a coach who is very much in demand. We have a coach who also has two dual D-U-A-L, you know, um, uh, ambitions to win it all at Michigan and to win it all in the NFL. There's lots of people that have these dreams, very few people that have the, the qualifications to turn them into legit ambitions. Our coach is one of them. There's no one else we could legitimately hire that would be better at the job. So what are we doing here? Because we have the best coach we could possibly hire we're putting up with it. That's what we're doing. Time now for the 10-minute war. And this is always one of the more intriguing conversations we have every year. Some years, it's more intriguing than others. Last year, for example, we did our crystal ball reconciliation with Mark Rogers, the voice of college football. Check out his channel here on YouTube year-round as well. And last year's, last year's uh, uh, crystal ball just was a banger, Mark. I mean, that was one of the best years I've ever had. And I've been doing this for well over 20 years. So uh, I don't even remember a lot of what I predicted in this year's crystal ball. I don't know if you do. That's why we're going to go through them one by one. Are you ready to go, brother? I am, Steve. Well, nobody, and I would be the last one to ever accuse you of not being able to predict win-loss totals for college football teams because you do that as well, if not better than anyone. And I always admire and find intriguing these coaching paths that you try to find. Those are interesting. You're really trying to thread the needle. So we can't in any way expect you to hit on anywhere close to, let's say a quarter of those, but uh, you, you raise some interesting scenarios. And so as always, you'll get to decide, do I get a full point, half point or no point? You're the objective judge here as uh, the Bucknut. All right, I'm entrusting myself to the integrity of an Ohio State fan, right? I'm turning over a new you leaf, Mark. <laughs> All you right. made those rules, Steve. I, I, they still astonish me at times, but I, I enjoy the power on this show once, once a year. Well, I used to enjoy it all the time, it seemed, but uh, I've been playing from – from the underdog role now for seemingly forever. Yeah, the rabbit's got the gun now, brother. Yes, he does. All right, let's go. All right, here we go. For the first time ever, three teams from the same conference will make the college football playoff. I thought Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State were all going to go 11-1 and one and all make the playoff, Mark. That obviously did not happen. Did not happen. I certainly thought that uh, you, you made the right choice if that was going to happen. And again, you are fighting from behind. You are... Uh, taking the underdog role, you are taking the long shot odds to try to hit on something that's historic in a lot of these selections, and that's another one. But it was a good calculated risk. But of course, number one, Penn State still cannot beat the other two. So that's uh, the one thing that's going to have to happen at some point. By the way, these were published almost exactly six months ago, the middle of July. So that's how far out these crystal ball predictions are made. All right, number two. That also means for the first time ever, two teams that didn't win their own divisions will make the college football playoffs. That also 
did not happen. We had four major conference champions make the college football playoff. So with the exception of leaving one of them out in Florida State because of the quarterback situation, a lot of this was decided and determined on the field. We had more dominant football teams uh, than I anticipated. Michigan, Washington, Florida State, of course, those three teams going undefeated. You could even take it to Georgia since you're talking regular season there. Uh, I expected more of a topsy-turvy season overall among the elites and that second level. Number three of my top 25 crystal ball predictions, two-time defending national champion Georgia will be the only undefeated team at the end of the regular season. That also did not happen. Michigan was undefeated at the end of the regular season. Uh, Florida State was undefeated at the end of the regular season. Washington was undefeated at the end of the regular season. So that goes to what you just said, that the, the top of college football was broader than I think anybody expected it to be going into the year. You should have trusted uh, Jimmy a little bit more. And uh, Liberty, <laughs> if you want to take I the I forgot Liberty, team. yes. Uh, was also undefeated at yeah. that point. Can't forget about the Flames. My wife's an alum. How'd I forget that? There you go. I'll be on that. I'll be couching it tonight. All right, next. Number four, Georgia will not become the first team since Minnesota from 1934 to 36 to win three consecutive national titles. I finally got one right. There's one. Steve, I think uh, you and I, when it comes to season-long predictions, we tend to take a similar edge when it comes to playing the field and understanding odds and understanding probabilities. And despite the juggernaut that is Georgia, and they certainly were right there with Alabama and could have won an SEC championship game, and then we would have gotten the game that uh, most of us wanted to see and still would like to have seen in college football, Georgia, Michigan, but we were denied that, and that's Georgia's fault. They didn't get it done. All right, I've got one right so far. Number five, Texas and Oklahoma will finish their tenures in the Big 12 by playing each other in the conference championship game. Do I get a half a point here, Mark? Because I got Texas, yeah, I right? A, yeah, I take a pragmatic look at that. You got one of two. Yep. All right, so that's one and a half. Number six. Ryan Day will leave Ohio State after the season to take over for the retiring Andy Reid as head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs and will be replaced by offensive coordinator Brian Hartline. The opposite has happened. Ohio State has just decided enough, no more salary caps, has gone full Avengers, whatever it takes, and has just emptied the tank to go full L.A. Dodgers here so far this offseason. Yeah, I'll be curious this July to see who you're predicting Ryan Day to coach in the NFL uh, in 2025, uh, because this this has been your your calling card the last couple off seasons. Right, this is the Ryan second year in a row I made this pick. Correct. Yeah. All right, one and a half correct so far. Number seven, SMU will win its first conference title since it was in the defunct Southwest Conference in 1984. I absolutely nailed this. Mark and they were, by the way, I know because I bet it. They were preseason eleven to one to win the A American Conference, and I did get that one right. And they should have been playing in that Fiesta Bowl game, in my opinion, against Liberty. Uh, they went undefeated against Group of Five teams. They only lost to TCU and Oklahoma. Played a much more difficult schedule, but yes, uh, eight and zero, oh, perfect American Conference champion. Uh, record in conference play. So SMU pulled it off, and now they get to try to win the ACC. That just sounds weird, but yes, they're in the ACC. Two and a half. Number eight, Ohio will win its first conference title since 1968. Wrong university, right state. Miami of Ohio uh, actually beat another Ohio school, Toledo, for the MAC title. So I got that one wrong. Well, if you're going to pick a MAC team to win, you, you stay in the state of Ohio and you throw a dart, you could do that. But uh, the Bobcats, good football team, didn't quite get it done. I think they finished six and two in the conference, 10 and three football team. Tim Albin, a good coach. Uh, certainly right there, respectable pick, but not right. But not right. No. Nope. Number nine, after losing four games in a season, only once between 1969 and 2001, Nebraska will lose at least four games for the 20th consecutive season but Matt Rule will take the Huskers to their first bowl game in seven years 
in his debut season. I got half of this one right. They, they couldn't beat Iowa at the end of the year to get to that sixth win. They couldn't beat Iowa. They couldn't beat Maryland. Right. They, they were five and three. Right. Yeah. Uh, Wisconsin in overtime. They, they, yeah, they just continue to do Nebraska things. Scott Frost, uh, that, that, uh, Aura still like hangs in the stadium somewhere. I guess it's still residue that's been uh, needs to be <laughs> done away with by Matt Rule. I mean, most of their losses this year again were one score games. That were many of their losses. Yes, again. All right, so we got half of that right. So I'm at three. All right, I've gotten three correct. Number ten, Miami will lose at least four games for the sixteenth time in the last eighteen seasons, but will bounce back to make a bowl game after a losing season in 2022. I nailed this one. They did have at least four losses. They went uh, seven and five and did go to a bowl game. So I did get that one right. Steve, maybe I'm not giving you enough credit for the Miami, Nebraska, and I think there's an Auburn selection coming up here. Uh, the probabilities are, are longer than I'm giving you credit for, but I, I do think that these are the most uh, calculated selections that you make in regards to being the safest choices. Yeah, I mean, I'm playing 20-year trend lines. You're right, those are pretty safe choices. Uh, so I, we have four right so far, okay? Next, number 11, Auburn will lose at least four games for the 16th time in the last 18 years. By the way, the other two seasons, they didn't lose four games. They won the national championship with Cam Newton and then almost won it again in 2013. But Hugh Freeze will take the Tigers to a bowl game in his debut season. That did happen, so now I've had five correct out of 11. You're coming back. It's Make it a comeback. Good. Let's see if we keep the momentum going. Number, number 12, Kirk Ferentz will retire as Iowa football coach after the season and be replaced by Kansas coach Lance Leipold. That did not occur. Although this would have been a good time for Kirk to go. They won the division one last time. We're heading into this new era with this expanded Big Ten where – Going eight and four at Iowa and winning a division ain't on the table anymore. You know, would have been maybe a good time to move on, but nevertheless, Kirk persisted. I was a bit conflicted in projecting that myself between the this would be a good time to go. You win another division championship, of course, winning a division championship in the West and then having hopes of winning the Big Ten overall. Those are, you know, that that chasm is a, is a large one. But then looking at the new Big Ten and what he's going to face, although I thought once he signed that contract extension that I, I believe takes him through 2029, I thought that was indication that, oh, I don't know that he can walk away from that kind of money. So Kirk and a new offensive coordinator will uh, take on the new Big Ten, and he's still looking for an offensive coordinator. That's crazy. But, yeah, it's almost February. They still have an OC there. All right, number 13. Deion Sanders will at least triple Colorado's win total from last season. So they won one game the previous year. Uh, they did triple. So I got that one right. That's six I've gotten correct. Right? No, Steve, five. No. no, six. That's six. No, yeah. you're six. Yeah. Yeah. You know, uh, one of my uh, most f fun, innovative stats that I've come up with, and maybe that's why I like it, because I came up with it, just trying to project who is going to make a significant change in college football either an ascension or a decline by at least three games and it was 25 of the 69 power fives this season in 2023 versus 22 of making that either three win plus ascension or decline in win total for a regular season and of course Dion and Colorado they were the the prime pick to do that this year I mean in September this looked like cash money we ended up having to sweat this prediction out with the way things went after that. All right, next, number 14. For the first time, Alabama will fail to be invited to the college football playoff in consecutive seasons. That not only did not happen, but turns out I got to see Nick Saban's last game as the legendary coach of the Crimson Tide. So I remain at number six. Blame Hugh Freeze for that one. Indeed, <laughs> yes. If it weren't for fourth and 31, this prediction would have come true, right? Number 15, Mac Brown will retire as North Carolina football coach after the season and be replaced by Clemson offensive coordinator Garrett Riley. There was a lot of Mac Brown retirement talk in November, particularly after the way that team finished, but he is back. So, nope, that didn't happen.
fine job by Mac when he first arrived in Chapel Hill. Now he's pretty much spitting out the same team every year that is one of the favorites in the ACC, one of those chic picks to break through, and then they just continue to field awful defenses and not get the job done and finish 8-5. and five. All right, 16. West Virginia will fire Neil Brown and replace him with UTSA coach Jeff Trailer. Not only did that not happen, Neil Brown was Big Ten coach or Big 12 coach of the year, and West Virginia won nine games. An incredible job that he did with that team, man. Phenomenal. He did. He did a great job with that team. They they should possibly check the schedule, and the Big 12 was underwhelming, of course, because West Virginia did feast on a pretty lousy schedule, but well done by Neil Brown in preserving his job at 9-4. and four. 17, for the first time ever, Wisconsin will fail to make the Big Ten championship game for a fourth consecutive season. No way to spin it. Luke Fickle's opening year was a disappointment for Wisconsin, and and Mark, I go back to watching their spring game, and, and I told you at the time, it reminded me a lot of watching Rich Rod's first spring game at Michigan where they had to play it at Ann Arbor Saline High School, I think, because they were uh, renovating the big house. And and we just did not have a quarterback on the roster that could run his system. And 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 it looked terrible. You know, in a, in a spring game where it's set up for you to look good. And that's what it looked like watching Tanner Mordecai and Wisconsin's receivers try to throw the ball and get open against Wisconsin's defense on a blizzard day for a spring game, which is what Big Ten football is like around here in November, and it just never caught on. So I got this one correct as well. That's seven right so far. I was wrestling between Iowa and Wisconsin. The game was at Camp Randall. That caused me to lean, and I try to remind myself that I think home field advantage doesn't play as much of a factor as most of us believe uh, but, of course, Iowa won that game. And, yeah, that was the tipping point, And that was uh, the game that determined it. Tanner Mordecai didn't really see the field until the bowl game against LSU and helped his NFL draft stock. But uh, beyond that, it was disappointing, yes, for the Badgers. 18, the Heisman Trophy finalist will be in alphabetical order. Marvin Harrison, Ohio State, got that correct. J.J. McCarthy, Michigan, no, but he did finish in the top 10. Michael Penix of Washington, I got that correct. Caleb Williams at USC, no, but he did finish in the top 10. I get a half a point there. I got two out of the four. Half a point <clears throat> and two respectable selections that didn't make it. So that's seven and a half I've gotten correct so far. All right, number 19, Marvin Harrison Jr. of Ohio State will become just the sixth wide receiver ever to win the Heisman Trophy and the eighth Buckeye to win the coveted award. That did not occur. Kyle McCord ensured that that was not going to happen. So you can blame one Kyle McCord on that one. Just decent quarterback play, but not to Ohio State standards. Marvin Harrison Jr., I don't even think, should have won the Bolitnikoff Award. Not that he's not the best wide receiver in the country, but did not have the best wide receiver season with only 67 receptions. So that's one where you're obviously playing a long, long shot of taking one particular guy against the entire field. Harry, Marvin Harrison Jr., Roma Duze, Malik Neighbors, I think all three of those receivers have a chance to go top 10 in the NFL draft. I mean, Marvin's going to go top five, obviously. All right, next, my um, predictions of the top five September non-conference games, LSU over Florida State, wrong. Alabama over Texas, wrong. Ohio State over Notre Dame, correct. Texas Tech over Oregon. You want to talk about a team that blew a game in their season, but wrong. And then Texas A&M over Miami, correct. So I got two out of these five. I'll leave it up to you whether that's good enough for a half a point or not. Uh, I thought most of those games were in your favor. The Texas Tech was you taking a shot at that game. And, and they had I that game one, man. They just gave that game away at the end. But yeah, they did. Uh, and I'm guessing that's the game that the least number of people that are watching are unfamiliar with. So Texas Tech, <clears throat> basically, Steve, you missed that game by an official's call in the end zone mm -hmm. on a would be interception late in the game that would have sewn up the win for Texas Tech. They gave Oregon the ball back. They kicked the game winning field goal. Folks, don't be fooled by the eight-point spread. There was a pick six in the final play of the game. 
I'll give you a half point because like you, I felt like that that one hurt. You know, when you make those predictions and you think you got the game nailed and then you get this lousy pick six, uh, bad beat at the end. Yeah, I, I'm in the same boat and probably sympathetically because of that, the half point. That's a Buckeye benevolence miracle right there. Even it is uh, the desolation of winter Buckeye benevolence miracle. Thank you, Mark. So I'm at eight now. Correct. Eight. Number 21, Boise State, North Carolina, and TCU will start the season in the top 25, but won't finish there. So I, the North Carolina and TCU were both ranked, did not finish in the top 25. I was correct about that. I can't remember if Boise State was in the top 25 or not, but also did not finish ranked. So do I get a point here? Absolutely. You nailed it. <clears throat> All right, that's nine. I think last year I got 12, which was an all-time record. Number 22, Miami, SMU, and Texas Tech won't start the season in the top 25, but will finish there. I only went one for three there with SMU. Yeah, unless we're going to get out the abacuses and deal in percentage points, uh, I can't give you anything for that one. No, I don't deserve it either, nor will I lobby. All right, so I'm at nine. Number two, three more to go. Number 23, the following first-year coaches will lead their teams to bowl games this season. Jeff Brom, Louisville, yes. Jamie Chadwell, Liberty, yes. Luke Fickle, Wisconsin, yes. Hugh Freeze, Auburn, yes. Tom Herman, Florida Atlantic, no. Matt Rule, Nebraska, no. So what's that, four out of six, I think that looks like? Yeah, so we, we could be harsh, but I've obviously set a precedent today and in years past. That That's a half point to me. Okay. Nine yeah. and a half, number 24 liquidate these teams that will that will win at least two fewer games than they did last season. BYU, yes. Central Florida, yes. Cincinnati, yes. East Carolina, yes. Fresno State, yes. Houston, yes. Marshall, yes. Purdue, yes. South Carolina, yes. TCU, yes. Tennessee, I believe, yeah, went eight and four, so yes. And UAB, yes. Dude, I went, <laughs> I went Moses Malone, foe. Fo fo there. You did. Fresno State? Did they drop two? They went they went they went eight and four. Yeah. Yeah. Are we going regular? We're going regular, regular season. season. Yeah. Okay. All right. They were they were ten and two the year before. Watch exclusive. I got so many so many right there that time. You got it. You got it. All right. That puts yeah. me at that puts yeah. me at ten. Okay. All right. No, eleven. Because I had nine. So that puts me at eleven. All right. Last one. Invest in these teams that will win at least two more games than they did last season. Akron, yes. Auburn, yes. Buffalo, I can't remember if they did or not. Central Michigan, no. Colorado, yes. Colorado State, yes. Iowa State, yes. Louisiana Tech, I can't remember. Miami of Florida, yes. Nebraska, what were they, 3-9 and nine and went 5-7, and seven, so yes. Northern Illinois, yeah. yes. Oklahoma, yes. Texas A&M. I can't remember. Okay. I, I got to clarify a lot here, Steve. Here we go. Uh, can we can we bring the board back up yes. so I can run through the teams, I, I please? I surrender to you. Yes, go ahead. I okay. yield my time. Akron went 2-10 this year. I, I know they are I thought they went – okay, my year. bad. All right, let's go. So that's a no. Okay, all right. Uh, Buffalo was a 3-9 and nine team this year, and okay. I can about guarantee they didn't go 1-11 last year. Central Michigan, I get those schools confused. I think they went six and seven. Uh, so I, I don't know. So that would be a yes if that's the case because they were four and eight the year before. Okay, okay. Yep. Um, you're good on the next several. Louisiana Tech went three and nine this year. Same record they had the year before, so no. Okay. And then Miami, yeah, five and seven, seven and five. Uh, you're good on the rest of uh, Texas A&M. Yeah, five and seven to seven and five. So you nailed the rest of that. That's a half point. You've missed whatever it is, like three, okay. four. All right. But that gets into those future picks you were talking about. What we're essentially saying is I got like what 75% of those win totals right in, the, yeah. in those last two. So that, that gives me at the end, I end up with 11 and a half. That's pretty good, dude. Not, not yes, not last year's Nostradamus like performance, but if I could get 10 of these right every year, that's, that's pretty impressive in my view. I'll take it. Yeah. 
Uh, I enjoy it because it's a bit of a history lesson because sometimes you dive into those trends and I love the trends. You also, you mix the uh, the win totals and the records and the 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 playoff uh, projections with the, these coaching. I would never be able to, I'm just, I'm not wired that way to come up with these coaching scenarios like you do, but they're always intriguing. They generally miss, but then again, you're trying to, again, thread a needle that's like a one in 50 or 100 shot, if that, uh, but you come up with some feasible scenarios. So I enjoy sitting here once once a year and being able to kind of evaluate the, uh, the Steve Day's crystal ball. It's well, fun. let it not be said that there is not at least one benevolent bucknut here in this once uh, exceptional country. Mark, always good to see you, brother. Thank you. Thanks for letting me stop by, Steve. Appreciate it. Take care. This week's Twitter poll results, we asked you, and is, is his incredible success here worth tolerating Jimmy pursuing an NFL job every offseason? 73% of you said yes. 27% of you said no. And since I opened my monologue giving the yes case, I thought it would only be fair with our feedback of the week to talk about things from the no perspective. And that's where we go next. Fletch writes, he is crippling our recruitment and transfer portal. Well, I don't think there's any question that Jimmy doing this two years in a row has impacted recruiting two years in a row. I also think the NIL has much to do with that uh, as well. But when you look at the transfer portal, with the exception of maybe the wide receiver from Wake Forest that ended up in Nebraska, and, and there aren't a lot of other guys that we were in on that we did not get. We have not been that aggressive. Uh, we went after a, a nickel, you know, a corner from Western Kentucky. He just decided to go back to school. We didn't, you know, lose him to another big school. Several other players maybe we would have taken that we were just not going to, you know, bid high dollar for. Uh, the two transfers we brought in from the Big Ten, I think both end up starting next year and will be uh, quality players for, for us. The offensive lineman from Northwestern, the linebacker from Maryland. So it's had an impact on why we have not, majorly capitalized in recruiting off of this stretch. I, I do agree with you there, for sure. But again, there's there's several programs that have out-recruited us the last few years that can't hold our jock strap in terms of on-field achievements. And I go back to what I said before. I understand the frustration, but what are we doing here? There's no other coach we can hire that's better than the coach we have. That's what we're doing here. And I suggest we keep doing it for as long as we can. Who knows? By the time we do another one of these episodes, we won't be able to do this anymore, and Jimmy will move on. We shall find out here, and I think imminently. Until then, don't forget to like, rate, subscribe, five-star review, share, follow. Help us to find more Michigan fans just like you, whether it is to watch here on YouTube or to listen to us on iTunes. And we appreciate all of that, all your comments as well. We appreciate those too on YouTube and elsewhere. Don't forget to follow us in between episodes on Twitter or X at Michigan Podcast is where you can follow us there at Michigan Podcast. Until the next time, I'm Steve Dace. Go Blue.